All right, as we saw last time, um, the calculations on these uh, tend to be a little trickier and take a little getting used to, so let's, uh, let's do an example. So here our example is this wooden beam um, that's glued together in this shape. So we've got two boards here. Um, and we're interested in what happens at that joint, right? We want to make sure that the shear stress there doesn't overwhelm that glue. So we need to know what that maximum shear stress is uh, in the longitudinal direction. As we found out last time, when we have a transverse load like this, we get a longitudinal stress. And so we're going to uh, examine this to find that maximum uh, shear stress here. So the first thing we need to know is the maximum internal resultant shear force along this beam. Okay, where is it going to experience uh, the largest uh, shear force uh, in the vertical direction in this case? So how do we find that? So pause and see if you can answer that question. And we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so the answer is that we need a shear diagram. Okay, so we're, that's our starting point here. If we're interested in the largest shear stress, we have to find the point on the board along in here. Where is our shear force going to be largest? Because wherever that shear force is largest, the shear stress is going to be largest too. And to do that, we solve a shear diagram like this. Um, and you can go back and, you know, we did this in the first couple weeks of this class. Um, but we need to solve a little statics problem, right? So my total force here is 16, 26 kilonewtons. Uh, and it, that force is right here, okay? So I could do some statics and figure out that this guy has, is holding up 6.5 kilonewtons. This one is 19.5 kilonewtons. Then we can um, come up with uh, our shear diagram, right? Just by imaginary taking uh, the method of sections at each of these points. Um, as you would expect, the shear is going to be strongest. That internal shear is going to be strongest right here. Uh, and right here, right next to those support posts. Um, and so on the left end, it's 6.5. On the right end, uh, it's negative 19.5. So our largest shear force is going to be right here. Our largest shear stress is going to be there as well. So now we know this guy, V, uh, and we need to solve for the rest of this problem. Okay, thickness is um, fairly straightforward. Well, it's a little tricky here because we've got two thicknesses, right? We're going from here to there. That's the thickness of that board and a thickness of this board. But we're really interested in the points of contact here. Okay, so how much this right on, you know, right where the glue is, it's only as thick as this board because uh, there's only that much glue that's holding this together. So our thickness is going to be that 30 millimeters. Uh, and we need to solve for I and Q. Now to solve for both of those, we need to know what Y bar is. In other words, where, what, what's the centroid, the neutral axis here, um, and the distance between that neutral axis and the bottom. So that's what we're calling Y bar here. Um, so to find Y bar, um, we're going to um, use this equation here, which is going to allow us to find the centroid of this cross section. Um, the two I's here are B and T, right? So we've got the bottom and the top. And so we're going to sum those up, okay? The sum of YB and AB. So YB is the distance from the bottom here to the centroid of just this bottom piece, right? So it's 150 millimeters. So our centroid of that piece is 75. 
0.75 uh, meters times the area of B, um, the distance between the bottom and the centroid of the top piece, or the centroidal axis, is 165 millimeters, and so that's where that comes from, times the area of the top. So that's all we did here is sum the centroidal distance times the area over the sum of the area. And so we sum those there. And I'm not going to go through uh, all the nitty gritty math here because uh, you all know how to find the areas of those cross sections. Uh, but we end up with a Y bar that's 0.12 meters. We can really check that, right? You know, before we begin here, we know that's going to be that centroidal axis is going to be below this and above the halfway point here. So if our answer doesn't give us an answer right here after we do all of this sort of uh, nitty gritty math, um, then we know we made a mistake, right? So pay attention to where it should be. We expect a value of about 0.1 to 0.125. And that's what we get. All right, so now we know Y bar. And we want to find I, okay? So we want to find I of this entire cross section. This isn't a standard shape, so we've got to use the parallel axis theorem, and we've got to add these things. Yuck, right? So a lot of math here. Um, to find the total of I, I'm going to find the I of the bottom plus the I of the top, okay? Um, and R represents the distance between our neutral axis and the centroid of these pieces, right? Because I can find I of this guy around my centroidal axis. That's this. Now the parallel axis theorem tells me to find the area of this top piece times the distance between that centroidal axis and the neutral axis, okay? And so for the top, um, or rather for the bottom here, which I've listed first, um, my centroidal axis of just the bottom piece is right here. Um, oops. Um, is right there. And so in my parallel axis theorem, this guy, RB, is going to be 0.12 minus 0.75. In other words, the distance between here and there squared, um, the area of B, and then the standard approach to finding the ax, uh, the moment of inertia of just this bottom piece, right? This is 112 times B times H to the third, okay? Notice that the, the H there is the long one here because I'm spinning around an axis that goes this way, my H on this piece is just that 0 0.03 meters because I'm spinning around an axis that moves parallel to the long longitude of the board. Okay, so not pretty, but uh, with a little practice, we're, we're just adding stuff here um, in order to get that value for moment of inertia. So notice that B and H, uh, and if you don't get that yet, let's you know let me know. We'll talk about it in class too. That gives us an I of that guy, 25, seven times 10 to the sixth, uh, m to the fourth. We're good. <laughs> now we need to find Q, okay? And Q is going to be the area above our point of interest, right? This was to find stress at this point. So we want the area above that point of interest times y bar prime, which is the distance between the neutral axis and the centroid of that um, area, okay? So in this case, y bar prime the distance between our neutral axis and the centroid up here at 0.165 meters is going to be that distance, right? It's going to be what? Uh, 0 0.045, right? 45 millimeters 
from here to there, I'm sorry, from there to the, the centroid of that area above. Um, then we're going to find the area of the top piece because that's the, here we wanted the area above the point of interest, right? Our point of interest is here. So we want the full area of that top piece. So that's going to be 0 0.03 times 0.15 meters. And that gives us a Q value uh, that is shown right here. Okay, so now we've got what we need and we can solve for our maximum stress. Okay, we found V max, that was the shear, internal shear force right here. We found Q here. We found I on the previous page. And then we decided our thickness was just the thickness that the glue was on. Okay. And that gives us a shear max of about five uh, megapascals. Okay. So if we built this piece with this load and we anticipated that load, we'd want to be able, uh, make sure that it could handle, um, that, that that glue could handle a shear stress of about five megapascals. And in fact, if we had a safety factor of say two, uh, we'd want a glue that could hold 10 or more uh, megapascals shear stress. Okay, and so if you, you if you're using glue, you can find those values, right? Especially industrial glue, you'll be able to find what kind of uh, compressive and tensile and shear forces it can handle, uh, and we check it against our numbers here as we design this piece.